Hey everyone, today, today we're gonna laugh. I think we really need that right now. Anyway, some of these not my mom calls are funny, strange, and just plain ridiculous. With that being said, let's begin. December 31st, 2017 in Winter Haven, Florida. A man calls 911 to report a DUI, but on himself. Let's listen to the 911 call. Nine one one. What's the address of your emergency? Um, all over Winter Haven. What's the address Florida. of your emergency right now, <coughs> sir? Um, hello. I don't know. I'm too drunk. I don't know where I'm at. Okay. What is it you're trying to report, sir? Uh, I was just uh, drunk driving. You're drunk driving right now. Yeah, all night. Okay, well, we're, can you I'm pull over? I'm actually right in front of the police department right now. Okay, can you pull over somewhere? Uh, so no, they we, won't. Where are you right now? I don't know. I'm too drunk. Okay, well, you need to pull over. Can you pull over I'm for me? Can you yeah. Can you pull over for me so we're going to get an officer to make contact with you? I'm showing that you're near 142nd Street Northwest. Can you look around and see for a sign? Um, what color is your Yeah, it's right past the... Uh, Police department, but no one's there, so. Sir, what color is your, crazy. Sir, sir, what color is your vehicle? It is red. What kind is it? Oh, uh, it's F-150. Okay, and where have you it's pulled, where have, where have you pulled over to? Um, I don't know what street this is here, but it's, um, right in front, right past the police station, the one right in. Let me ask you a question. Um, okay, well, sir, I have officers on, no, this is Polk County Sheriff's Office. We dispatch for Winter Haven. And we have a unit coming out to you now. What is your last name? Um, your last name, sir? Uh, I think I'm going to go get something to eat. They can catch up with me. Um, no, sir. What is your last name? Is it, is it, is it helpful? Yeah, it's very helpful. Yes, sir, it is. Where have you been all night? Um, driving around, trying to get pulled over, actually. Sir, what is your last name? Um, no. I don't feel like giving that to you right now. Okay, you, you, you called because you wanted assistance. Are you driving now or did you pull over? No, nah, I pulled over. Okay, what are you next to? Can you look out there and see what you're near? A landmark? What do you see? It's, um... What do you... Like, Silver Manor. I'm probably going to pull in here. Do you need EMS or paramedics? No, I need the police department. Okay, well, that's what I'm trying to get to you. So, if you do me a favor, look out. What do you see? Do you see a McDonald's? Do you see a bank? What do you see? Um, it's a, uh, it's a public. You're near public? Are you in the parking lot? No, I'm driving on the wrong side of the road. Now you're driving on the wrong side of the road, going in which direction? I don't know, this guy won't get on the way, though. Sir, where are you? You really don't right, want to well, hurt you me. have a nice night. Sir. All right. Sir. Have a good night. Sir. <laughs> Officers are looking for you right now. I need you to pull over right now. All right, pull over. You don't need to tell me what to do. Sir, you called for help. I'm trying to help you. And you're on the wrong side of the street. You may hurt somebody or yourself. Look, I'll park in the middle of the road. This no, is... I don't want you parking in the middle of the road. I want you to pull into That's a lot. Me. You know what? You don't have to. Either they're going to do it or not. You they're gonna, sir, power. sir, they're going to do okay. what or not? I'll have to let you go. i got to talk to the police officers. What right, is... Thank you. Sir. You're not getting any more information from me. Have a good night. When police arrive to the scene, they find the man inside the vehicle in the middle of the road. And according to a report, Michael Lester, the man that made that number one call, admitted to drinking beers and said that he only had slept four hours in the past four days. He also reportedly admitted to swallowing methamphetamine earlier instead of smoking it. Lester also has a criminal history, including DUI, drug possession, disorderly conduct, resisting, and a hit and run. He was arrested and charged with DUI for driving on the wrong side of the road, proper use of center lane and not wearing a seatbelt. So there you have it. I don't know what you make of this number one call, but I think the moral of this case is don't drink and drive. Just don't do it. Get a lift, get an Uber, get a taxi. Anyway, let's move on to the next number one call. I'm on one emergency. I'm not from this area, so my apologies if y'all have a different protocol where the town I'm in, we don't have any number but 911 to call. 
Okay, what's going on? Here's my situation. Here's my situation. I'm at the Wasabi Japanese Steakhouse off of 78A in Murfreesboro. July 2016, in Tennessee, a man calls 911 from inside a hibachi restaurant and tells the operator that his wife has been sexually assaulted. But you won't believe who committed this heinous crime. Let's keep on listening. Okay. Chef, the chef here that was doing our meal, at the end of the meal, pulled out this little freaking doll with its pants down, and he shot water on my wife out of its That is a sexual assault against my wife. And totally disrespectful. I mean, okay. I, I want I, I want this chef arrested for sexual uh, sexual assault. Tell me, I will tell me again what happened, I, sir. I'm not I'm not from I'm not from Tennessee, so I don't know Tennessee laws. But in Texas, okay. that is sexual okay. assault. Okay. All right, start from the beginning, sir. Tell me at, what happened. Okay, at the end of the meal, what? the chef pulled out this eight, seven, six or seven inch tall doll had his pants pulled down and it shot water on my wife out of it. Okay, so the chef had his pants I, down I don't, or... Yeah, the chef that was cooking our meal uh -huh. did that at the end of the meal. Yes, sir. Now, so I he don't took know the doll. The law. He took the doll out of his. That is considered sexual assault. He pulled the doll out in front of my, in front of me, my wife, and my two kids, two of my kids, and two of my grandkids. Okay. And shot water on my wife out of his. Okay. Now in Texas, in Texas, that is sexual assault. Okay. I don't know What's about your name, that. sir? James Lassiter, L-A-S-S-I-T-E-R. So I want to press charges. I want this guy arrested for sexual assault. And what's that phone number for you, Mr. Lassiter? My number is... Okay, are you still in the restaurant, or are you, like, out in your car, or where yeah, are you I'm, I'm outside of my car. I tried speaking to the management about it. They're uh -huh. not going to do anything about it. Okay, what kind of car are you going to be waiting in? I am at a, in a, uh, it's a rental. It's a Chrysler Town & Country, black. A black Town & Country? Yeah. Okay. I, t I took my family over to across the highway to the putt putt and game place, and I came back over here to talk to their management about it. Okay, so and you're in the parking lot like, of what's right? They, they don't care. Okay. Sorry? You said you're yeah, in the parking lot of what's up. Okay. Jap yeah. Wasabi Japanese State. Okay. Right? All right. I'll have an officer on the way over to talk to you. Okay, Mr. Lasseter? Thank you very much. You're welcome. When police arrive to the Wasabi Japanese Steakhouse, they arrest the toy. He will serve life in prison without parole. I'm just kidding. According to a very brutal and intense investigation, when officers arrived at the restaurant, they noted the toy wasn't anatomically correct. The officer wrote, By the way, this is what the officer actually wrote in the report. I observed that the toy to have no penis and just a hole for the water to shoot out. However, James Lasseter said, just because somebody cut off a piece of a plastic, it doesn't mean that it's okay. Doesn't change the fact that you're getting peed on. <laughs> and the manager did issue an apology to the couple, but claims he has never had any complaints about the toy in the past. He said families like it and think it's funny. No charges have been filed. Folks at Wasabi Japanese Steakhouse in Murfreesboro say along with dinner, Fire's coming. diners yeah, get a show. Them. But now one diner says last night she thinks the cooks here showed a little too much of the little guy in the cook's just hand. Like that, hold that water, just like that. Here's a closer look. You hold this eye and that push up. The water come out. A plastic toy that yeah. sprays water yeah, made it. to look like the figure is urinating when its toy pants are lowered. Last night at dinner, Wasabi Restaurant admits one of the chefs shot some of the water in the face of one of its customers. It peed on me, basically. It shot water out of its penis. How's that? Out of its wee wee area. Isabel and James Lassiter. Does that make sense? Here on a job from Texas say they were mortified when the chef essentially made the toy urinate water really on Isabel. In front of our minor children and grandchildren. It really didn't have a wiener, but you got the point. They were so upset they even called the police, citing assault. It was a sexual style of assault on my wife. 
Police also noted the doll wasn't, well, anatomically correct. But Isabel and James say that doesn't matter. I mean, that, that, just because it didn't have a weenie. Just because somebody may cut off that little piece of plastic to say, okay, it's not there anymore doesn't change the fact that you're getting peed on. Yeah, I really The general manager, Johnny Huang, yeah, I that. says he apologizes to the family and that he's never had any complaints about the toy before. And the kid like it. He like it. They pay the water. They think just a water gun, kind of like a water gun, you know. But now he Enjoy says it. chefs will yeah, at least time. ask permission Thank you. before showing more of the toy boy again. Anyway, what do you guys think about this case? Because it seems a little too ridiculous to me. I mean, look at this cute, little, adorable toy. I really want to know your opinion. Let me know down below in the comments. Let's move on to the next one. Police. 911, where's your emergency? Oh, 91. It's a missing guy that ran in my house. What happened? A, a naked guy inside my house ran in. November 2017 in Edgewater, Florida. Now, this 911 call is not necessarily all too funny, but rather strange and not too random. Anyway, a woman calls 911 and says that there's a naked guy roaming around her house the operator then asked do you know him and she responds absolutely not let's keep on listening okay do you know him no absolutely not please hurry okay what is he doing uh, i don't what is know he doing? when he ran is, in and is I anybody hurt not yet but my my stepson has got a gun. He's over there. Who has a gun? It. Who has a gun? Uh, the guy that ran in. License plate, Florida, 275. License plate, license plate, Florida, 275. Please hurry. Okay, what? whose car is that? I don't know. I'm over here where I can't tell you what kind of it is. Okay, who gave you that tag number? My stepson, which he lives next door. We're trying to find him. Please hurry. Is he still in your house? I don't know. I ran out when he came in. What is... <laughs> okay, where's your stepson? He's out in the yard. He's not in the house. He didn't go in the house. I don't know where, if the guy's still in the house or what, but his car is here with the door open. He ran in the house naked. Please. What? I'm armed and outside. He's armed and out. He's armed and outside. I am. No, the neighbor. The neighbor is armed and outside, waiting okay. for the police. Hurry. Okay, I want you to stay on the phone with me. What's your name? Yeah, I have yeah. him on the way, but I want you to stay on the phone with me, okay? Okay. Can you get to a safe place? Yes. Let me have the phone. Right here. Just stay right there. Okay. Hi, I'm the neighbor. I'm actually my... Okay. And I am and what... armed. Okay, what happened there? I was there? to know that. I was in my garage. I heard a car speeding backwards into our long driveway. He stopped, jumped out of the car butt naked and ran into my father and uh, mother-in-law's home. Okay, does and anybody know this guy? Out. Huh? Does anybody know him? No. I have no idea who he is. He must still be in the house, their house, but no one's in the house except him. I just want the police to know that I am out here, and I do have my firearm for defense. Okay, where is your gun at? It's in my hand. Okay. What? Okay, can we get still in this place? I'm in a safe place. I live right next door. I'm in my yard, 100 feet away from the house. I'm walking up to the front gate. Okay, can you, I know you're you're police. protecting yourself, but can you put your gun away, maybe in your band? All right, or he's something? coming out. He's okay, coming out. don't, don't, 
don't do nothing to harm yourself, okay? No, I'm not. He's jumping in his car. What kind of car? Wasn't in it. I went to take the key out. The key wasn't in it. Okay. What I don't know what he did with it? it. It's a Volkswagen, silver. I'm not sure the model. I think Two he's door, four the door, car, truck, van, SUV? Four door car. Okay, is he in the car yet? No, he's standing out in the yard naked, staring into the sky. He's walking towards my house. He's definitely drugged out for sure. Okay, does he have any clothes on at all? Nothing. Hey, over here, buddy. Come over here. I'm trying to keep him out of my house where my mother-in-law is. Hey, 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 come okay. over here. Okay, I want you to go to a safe place, okay? I've got to get... Don't, don't try to improve in your no, house. No, I'm backing away. I'm backing away. Can you call? No. Okay, we have hey, officers that be pulling... They just passed my house. Can they turn around? All right, he's laying in my yard. He's laying down in the yard now? He's laying down in the yard, rolling around. He's getting up. Okay, I want you to put your gun away. We have units yes, coming I have. on scene. And they just passed my house. Where's your gun at? It's, I put it in the bushes. Okay. Sir! My mother-in-law's in the house. I don't want him to get in. Is the police there yet? Yes, they're here. Okay, did you point hey, out I, the house I, I to him? He's, he's on the scene. Okay, I'm going to let you go. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. So when police arrive to the scene, they find Joseph Vaglika rolling around the grass in the front yard. And according to a very intense investigation, police said Joseph entered the home through the garage door and ran through the kitchen acting irrational. He was actually extremely drunk, but he ended up in the bedroom and grabbed woman's clothing and placed it over his body. Joseph then runs all the way over to the stepson's home and starts banging on the window, at which time the son grabbed a pistol and stood guard in case Joseph Joseph came inside. A police report did state that he was intoxicated. He was taken to the hospital where he sobered up, then released and taken to jail. He was charged with burglary and assault. Now this case could have ended so much worse. Thankfully, no one got injured. Anyway, on to the next one. February 2016 in Hillsdale, New Jersey. A postmaster calls 911 and says that one of his post workers is being attacked by a vicious gang of turkeys. Let's listen to this 30 second terrifying 911 call. Was that police? Hey, so I was just a postmaster in Hillsdale. Hey, it's gone. Okay, you're not going to believe this, but I got a carrier that's being attacked by wild turkeys. Won't let him deliver the mail. <laughs> Where? On Esplan Drive, 28 Esplan Drive. Esplanade? Yeah, I guess that's it. E S P L A N. Yeah, Esplanade Lake Drive. Yeah. 28, okay, being attacked by turkeys. This has been going on. It's crazy. I mean, they're actually attacking, biting, they chase the trucks, everything. Wow. Take a look at it. All right, no problem. We'll send them over there. Thank you. All right, bye. When police arrive, they murder. All the turkeys. Neighbor said, It was like that duck hunt video game from Nintendo. I couldn't believe my eyes. I'm kidding, that didn't happen. Police actually just shoot them away and no one was injured. They pretty much just went, You, you gonna get now, turkeys? You gonna get now? You got them turkeys, some bitch? You gonna shoot now? You got them turkeys? I'll tell you what. I am an idiot. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> the massive birds, over a dozen of them, surrounded a mail carrier Tuesday who was on her mail route, trapping the worker inside the postal service truck. 
And I know the mail carrier, she's a nice lady. I actually feel kind of bad for her. According to Hillsdale Police, two officers were dispatched to the chaotic scene and managed to scare away the turkeys by simply walking toward them. There was one morning I opened up the garage door and it was standing on my husband's car and it just would not get off. Marissa Cefali, who's lived in the neighborhood for nearly 20 years, says the turkey turmoil is just the latest of wildlife-related incidents on the block. They've done that before. I've heard that when they're mating, they'll attack anything. So, you know, I could see, and it's a lot of them, and they're big. They're not tiny. They're very big. <laughs>
heard some screaming and noticed that there was a woman stuck in the drain. And so she called 911. Fire rescue was able to remove the grate to get access to the storm drain, which was about eight feet deep. They then used a ladder and a harness to pull her out to safety. She was taken to a hospital to be treated for dehydration. She was then released and went to her mother's home to recover. Police said that she was swimming in a canal near her boyfriend's housing complex when she noticed a doorway near the shallow part of the canal. So she entered and noticed the tunnel. She claimed that she became curious to where the tunnel led and continued to follow it. That tunnel led to another tunnel and so on until she realized that she was lost. Now the woman also told police that she was down in the tunnels for 20 days and that she found an open can of ginger ale and that's how she survived. What? That sounds crazy to me. Like, ugh, how? But a police officer said, For someone to be down there for two or three weeks, there's some skepticism, especially if somebody is not having an adequate amount of liquids to drink and food. So it would be very difficult to survive down there. But that's what she's telling us right now. And that's all we have to go on unless we find the information or any other means of disapproving that. That's where we are at this point. And the woman's mother said that her daughter has a history of doing our things and making bad decisions due to her mental health and substance abuse issues she was a methadone patient and received her last dose the day before she went missing till this day police still don't know what actually happened and so it remains a mystery i do feel bad for this woman though i'm so glad that she survived and hopefully she gets the help that she needs October 2019 in Mesa, Arizona. A five-year-old calls 911 to place an order. Let's listen to what that order is. Hello, 911. Hi, is this McDonald's? McDonald's? Yes, is this McDonald's? No, this is the Mesa Police Department. Do you have an emergency? Can I get one with that meal? A happy okay, meal? Hello, you there? Hello? Who is this? Hey, this is Anthony. No, the... no! Hello? Hi. Hi. Who are you? McDonald's. Hello? What? Hi. This is Anthony with the Mesa Police. Is your mom or dad there? Oh, uh, here. Is this... Yeah, my mom and dad are here. Can you put them on the Wait one second. Okay, thank you. Hello. Hey, this is Anthony with the Mesa Police Department. We received uh, several calls from this location. We just wanted to confirm that there was no emergency. No, sorry. I don't know. The kids must have had the phone. Yeah, it was, uh, he kind of made my day. Hey, was that your son? Yeah. Yeah. He, he was asking me if I was McDonald's and if he can get a happy meal. Uh, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. So, <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Yeah, we ha so we'll probably still have an officer head out there for a welfare check. Who knows, maybe he'll stop by McDonald's, I don't know. <laughs> but no, it's fine, no. Oh my gosh. When police arrive to the home, Officer Valdez shows up with a Happy Meal and gives it to that little boy whose name is Charlie. The officer did go over the rules with Charlie of when you're supposed to call 911. He explained how he's busy bringing Happy Meals to kids. He can't help people who really need him. Police protocol required a visit and when the officer arrived, Charlie was in for a big treat. Yup, a Happy Meal. I felt like it's a good time to you know, bring him a Happy Meal, but at the same time, educate him. So I said, well, I brought you a Happy Meal, but before, you know, I give it to you, we need to talk about, you know, the right time to call 911, and he handled the situation with such love and kindness. So has Charlie learned his lesson? When do we call 911? So there you have it. Props to Officer Valdez for being such a cool cop and for setting such a good example to other officers. Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you really enjoyed it. And thank you so much for watching. And if you're a patron or a member of the channel, I really, really appreciate it. And if you yourself want to become a member or a patron, there would be links in the description of this video. And again, thank you all for watching. Love you. Bye. See you next week.